In late 2013, a sordid, twisted murder investigation gripped Central Kentucky. A transy grad and chef at UK was lured from his Lexington apartment, beaten to death, and dumped into the Kentucky River. Now Alex Johnson's family is opening up about life after such a horrific event. They have learned that there is no playbook for how to navigate a homicide investigation. They've also learned a case doesn't always end with a conviction. Seven years later, this story still isn't over. And in a podcast out now called Taking Alex, I get into the story you haven't heard. You can't make this up. This is the craziest thing you've ever heard. And it's all true. <laughs> It's the kind of story Casey Johnson never imagined she'd be driving two and a half hours from Bowling Green to tell me all over again. Only this time she brought with her details that you have never heard before. I mean, it was a nightmare. It was a complete nightmare. And I wouldn't wish it on anybody. His family says he disappeared without a trace and police call the circumstances suspicious. Her brother's murder unfolded just five days before Christmas. Outdoorsy, outgoing friend to many, Alex Johnson got a knock at the door of his Lexington apartment. It was Mark Taylor telling him to come downstairs. There was a surprise waiting. And there is no question this was absolutely calculated. Without a doubt, yes. What happened after that depends on who you ask. At trial, yes. prosecutors painted a crystal clear picture of a premeditated attack. Alex's good friend, Mark Taylor, and his taxi driver chauffeur, a 6'8", 425-pound felon nicknamed Tiny, borrowed a truck and got a barrel that would later serve as a makeshift coffin for Alex, who was viciously beaten by Taylor before taking his last breath. I didn't do what you say I did. Mark Taylor has told his story to reporters before. This time, Taylor asked me to look into points he's appealed to the Kentucky Supreme Court. But when I got to digging, his points only raised more questions. I did an open records request from the governor's office, and one of the things that they sent me back, I was not expecting. <laughs> I have spent the past several months pulling old news stories and interviews and asking my own questions of the case's major players. You have done a lot of murder investigations in your years with the department. Where does this one stack up? It is probably the only case I've worked in 20 years where I haven't had the opportunity to sit down and interview uh, the person I've gotten warrants for or arrested. He's one of those where I just, I don't know what made him tick. I revisit this twisted tale told by those who lived it. The death penalty was not an option. Is that something that you wanted if that had been on the table? Absolutely. I believe in the death penalty. And the one from across the ocean who married into it. Tell me what a prison wedding is like. Well, nothing like your wedding. <laughs> Seven years later, this case is still just as hot as it was in 2013. Taylor's multiple appeals have been denied, but just last summer, the now 35-year-old found out he may have been just a slip of paper away from freedom. Amazing. Yeah. Apparently, uh, Bevan uh, granted you a, a full pardon. Follow along as I walk you through it all, every twist, turn, and shocking detail that became the motivation for Taking Alex, a true crime podcast that takes a raw, emotional look into a high-profile case. She likes it, it just takes a while. And the hell it brought to a Kentucky family. Yeah. She's not ready for that yet. <laughs> She's got to warm up to it. <laughs> And you can find Taking Alex anywhere you listen to podcasts. I also have links to it on my social media pages. So Kristen, there are a lot of true crime podcasts. What makes this one different? I listen to a lot of them, and I think a lot of them just rehash or revisit a case from beginning to end. And I think what this one does is it flips the script. You're hearing what happened through Alex Johnson's family's perspective. And like they said, um, how awful it was to wait for the trial to take place two and a half years later and then to go through the appeals process and an almost pardon uh, by former Governor Bevin. So that's just a wound that cannot heal yeah. for the Johnson family. Well, I've listened to it. It's well done, and I recommend it. Thank you very much. Yeah. Put a lot of time into it.